So when, when you get a great, huge role like this and with a brilliant script, with a brilliant cast, telling a powerful, significant story, um, that gives you, that has a role with so much complexity that allows you to show so much of your range. I assume when you find out you got a part like that, the first reaction is joy. But knowing what was required of you in this role, knowing what the places you had to go, do you recall how you felt when you first got told you'd been given the part? Yes, I do remember when I was told I was leaving, I was leaving another production, I was working, and Chinoya called me. And I'm in the car driving. I had to pull over because I figured it was going to be a thing. And she told me, and I was like, wow, yeah, I think I was happy for two seconds. Because once you get it, you know that you have a great task, a great service to undergo. And so I felt that weight at that point. Um, but you know, <laughs> it's supposed to. It's supposed to feel like that. That's what this. That's what that experience is. That history is on American, um, on that American um, moment uh, and legacy because it's reverberated to now, right? So um, I can smile today. <laughs> I can have joy in sharing what she always wanted to be, um, to be shared. I only can smile today, but did it take a while after the shoot sort of finished to go back to feeling yourself? Because, I mean, you had to let your mind go to, I mean, it's the unthinkable where you had to let your mind it go. It is quite the unthinkable to undergo um, this. Uh, and then you go, uh, and then she underwent it, right? Um, it took time to recover, recuperate. Lots of acupuncture therapy and um, uh, physical therapy and uh, what else? Bunch of other stuff. <laughs> uh, lots and lots of rest. Months, a, a few months. So um, it does a number on you, grief and mourning, which I think like globally we're all undergoing. And so for people to make the intentional choice to witness this, you, we've witnessed a lot of loss. And so this is another thing where we have to continuously witness history, especially thinking about an American context where we are living in a time where people are disinterested in the truth of American history. And so this is an opportunity to confront that, to resist that, and for people to be awakened in the way that they were awakened in 1955. Mm. Now, she shows a, a remarkable resilience and strength though. So I wonder if you sort of learned anything from her, not just necessarily this role, but as a, just as, a, as an actor, as a performer. Mm -hmm. Do you find across your career that when you play certain characters that have certain traits, can you, do you ever find yourself borrowing from them in your everyday life? Um, not barring, more like, because there's a rigor to what she underwent. There's a rigor and a discipline to being a woman in 1955. Femininity had certain other requirements. And so as a person who religiously wears, what do you say, t-shirts and sweatpants often? Uh, <laughs> like, coming out of that um, is a challenge to the, to, to the body and, and, what she was dealing with, like she was prosperous in Chicago. She's the only black woman in her in her workspace. Um, um, she comes from a legacy of, you know, black people who served the community. They're coming. She, her mom was from Mississippi, and then getting to Chicago, she served uh, people who were migrating north. So you know, it's it's about. I think I learned the various ways of beauty, the different modalities of beauty, and and different ways to, to coerce or speak with community. Mamie, Mamie had to learn that herself too. And so she, she teaches me that still. I constantly reread the memoir to, to learn from her. Because it feels like she sort of displays a sort of strength. It feels like only a mother can. I just wonder, did you have any kind of strong mm. female presences in your life, be it a parent, be it a teacher oh, wow. or yeah. grandparents that you were able to draw on when you were playing this? Numerous women. My mother is uh, the utmost of a strong and like, I like everything, like performance art, my performance artwork, my personal work is all about the public and private nature of black women's labor. And so I'm incessantly uh, engaging with black women who are my peers, who are artists, who are my friends, who are, um, you know, my mom, my grandmother, uh, um, different folks who are actors, who incessantly teach me, mentors, my, my OGs, like, I'm incessantly pulling from black women. They, you know, what Trevor Noah said the other day, <laughs> they are the people who have, who have taught him about what it means to be in this world and who are incessantly thinking about the, how to be equitable in, in community, nationally, globally. We are, you know, they are the ones who are, 
who are leading the way in that manner. Have I got time for one more question? Come on, come on, come on. Quickly. Because <laughs> it's just there's one moment when you're, so I think the character's on the stand cool. and it's one of the yeah. most striking pieces of acting I've seen for such a long time that moved me so much with when your eyes are closed and she's kind of recounting. Mm -hmm. and, and I just wondered about, did you, is that something that came naturally? Because I think your kind of eyes are sort of flickering in that moment. If it's something, mm -hmm. Is it something that came naturally when you were performing or did you study the nuances and intricacies of people's physical kind of reactions to grief? No, no, that's just natural. It's mm. um, that moment is a, is when she sought to and we think about Chinoy and I of humanizing Emmett of um, re in recalling his body in the way that she examined him from foot to head. She's not just looking at a a a, a body that has undergone a horrific um, experience, she's looking at the history and the memories of this person that she reared, that she had a challenging birth with, that she, you know, whooped once but would never do again because she understood what would happen, what, what that did to him and, and only wanted to give him joy. This person that she gave independence to and he went off and like paid her bills and came back and had the change and all this beautiful stuff his knees that are her family's knees, his beautiful eye color. She's remembering everything about how glorious he was. Um, and so that's, I mean, when I'm in that moment, it's, it's just, you know, it's, you're just there. Uh, and you're trying to, and then to be in a space where you're looking at people who are completely, don't give a shit about that humanity, um, you close and you remember more and see more in the dark than you do in the light, even though you're, as you're trying to bring this darkness to the light. Mm. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. So much, Steven. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!